Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report, chatting with Dave Erfley, founder and editor of the Junior Minor Junkie. We're going to be talking again about precious metals market and the change in sentiment, or I think you can argue a change in sentiment just by looking at, first and foremost, the breakout in the gold price, but even more so what investors care about down into the equities we've seen higher volumes come into some of the majors we've seen broadly i would say about a 20 percent rebound in the sector and a lot of the stocks taking back a lot of those losses that they experienced through the first two months of this year dave your gauge on sentiment seems to have turned but Again, you look at GDX, GDXJ, SIL, they are still in longer term downtrends. So where do we stand on this whole sentiment for the mining stocks? Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious the the sentiment has turned. You know, we had that we had the gold price go up what $150 in eight consecutive sessions in March. And you know, it got it got extreme overbought and due for a correction, we we expected, you know, some sort of correction to happen this week. And the correction is taking place, but, you know, it's it, it's it's very subdued. And while this correction is taking place, this healthy correction is taking place, you've had the silver price and the gold stock start to show relative strength. So that shows you that sentiment is improving because basically for the past four years, if you take a look at, it, at the charts of both silver and GDX, GDXJ, in relation to the to the gold price, I mean, they don't look like they're they're moving from from the same commodity. The gold price, you know, looks like it's been in a bull market. You know, after a four year consolidation, it's it, it's going back up. But if you take a look at the silver price and GDX and GDXJ, you know, they look like they've been in bear markets. So you know, that's a really good gauge of sentiment right there because we need to see the silver price. And gold stocks continuously show relative strength to the gold price while it's consolidating here. We need to, we need to see weakness being bought in, in, in the gold stocks and the silver price starting to show relative strength to gold. And that's, that's what we're starting to see. But, you know, that's not a trend just yet. We're just starting to see it this week. But, you know, the, the, the gold price consolidating here and not even coming close to, to the 2100 level again after hotter inflation data came out of the U.S. this week. That's very encouraging. Yeah, Dave, I think it's nice to see the, the strength of gold holding up, all things considered, in macro land. And as you say, the relative strength in silver and the mining stocks as gold corrects a little bit. But to the point of silver and the mining stocks still really needing to break out and show that they've got even more strength, a lot of people believe if gold keeps going higher, eventually it will lift silver higher and that will blast the mining stocks out. What resistance levels are you watching in silver or let's say GDX or GDXJ that you want to see cleared where you think, okay, now we're starting to get some real momentum going? Yeah, in silver, it's pretty obvious that the 26 level, there's stiff resistance there for the past year or so. And for a multi-year resistance, it's that 30 dollar level. But I think if you if you see a strong close above 26, I think it could run to 30 pretty quickly. And as far as the gold stocks are concerned, in GDX, that 32 33 area is overhead resistance that needs to be cleared with some good volume, and in the GDXJ it's that 39 40 area that needs to be cleared. So, yeah, the downtrends are still in place in, the, in 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 GDX and GDXJ. They haven't been cleared yet, even though we've we've had a breakout move in, in gold, but not a confirmed breakout because we still haven't got that twenty one hundred dollar close on a monthly basis yet. So the, the gold stocks are still a bit apprehensive because you know we're still we're continuing to see you know strength in in the stock market in Bitcoin. AI's come off a little bit. That's encouraging. Um, what happened with Nvidia last week? where it had a huge reversal on, on Friday and it, it I think the market cap went down something like 250 billion which is close to the entire market cap of the mining sector in one day so i mean you know nvidia went up a uh, trillion in market cap in just a couple of months this year so we need to see you know more profit taking and more signs of the ai bubble bursting i think before we're going to see more interest in gold stocks. 
to that interest point on the volume front gdx just last week had its highest volume week since almost exactly a year ago right again when gdx turned around in at the very beginning of march what have you noticed within any subsector of the gold or silver stocks in terms of volume yeah i've noticed that too so we need when when we see that 32, 33 area breached on GDX. I'd like to see it take place with higher volume still than what we've seen. Um, Because, you know, once we saw that high volume spike in GDX and GDXJ, it kept going higher, but on lower volume. We need to see rising volume as it goes higher after this consolidation. If you take a look at the silver price, that huge white candle yesterday is very encouraging as it t- also took place along with the copper price doing the same thing. Copper is bumping up. Uh, and I think it's, it's now cleared that $4 resistance in copper. That's, you know, that's a key number in copper. So if silver and copper continue to go up, especially in the face of the Fed continuing to, to keep interest rates where they are and the dollar also showing signs of, of going higher, which it is today, yet it is in a downtrend now, but we need to see the the silver price and the copper price and the gold stocks continuing to show relative strength against gold. I mean, it's, we, haven't, we haven't developed a trend yet. We're starting to see that this week, but we haven't developed a trend yet. I'd like to see that trend continue. Well, Dave, I want to throw a wild card question at you. Gold stocks versus silver stocks, The reason why I'm asking is gold has already started moving, and you know that from a margin standpoint, the higher that gold goes, if it gets up to 2,200, 2,300, 2,400, that is going to make an impact on the margins of the gold producers. That doesn't help the silver producers as much, although a lot of them have a lot of gold exposure now. But when you look at the silver stocks and the silver price, there's maybe not as much to be excited about yet, but we know silver has this propensity to play catch up and really blast higher. Because of that, would you be more weighted to gold stocks right now to catch this initial move in gold and maybe a little less focus on silver to add those later? Or do you think that silver could still surprise to the upside? How are you looking at gold versus silver stocks? Yeah, I think silver does have a chance to surprise to the upside here because it's got a lot of catching up to do, right? I mean, we've already had that move up in, in the gold price and we're starting to see signs that silver is playing catch up. Because when silver moves, it moves quick in both directions. And you take a look at these silver stock. I mean, they're still really hated. They're not moving much. So that's where the biggest leverage is. But you got to be in the right stocks. I mean, there's just not a lot of silver stocks worth getting into as far as I'm concerned. You know, and um, you just got to make sure that you're in the right ones. Because in the past, you know, in, in previous uh, moves, I've done much better in silver stocks than I have in gold stocks, but, you know, I've done better in more gold stocks than I have in silver stocks. If that makes any sense. I get the biggest torque out of a properly purchased accumulated silver stock than I do in a larger basket of gold stocks. Like basically what I'm saying is all you need is like one or two properly accumulated silver stocks at the right time to do really, really well. I mean, you could have the right silver stock go up 20, 30 times over the next couple of years where, you know, in in gold stocks, maybe you only have five to 10 baggers. I know that sounds a bit greedy, but, you know, you always want to have at least one or two really good silver juniors in your portfolio. They're difficult to find in bull markets, but in bear markets, they're easier to find. So I think I've done that with with several of them in my portfolio for myself and my subscribers. I think I found the right ones. Like I said, you know, I mean, I've had plenty of time to get into the right ones, and I th- I think I have. And you really want to have leverage exposure to the silver price with at least one or two solid juniors in your portfolio. All right, enough said there, Dave. Look, I think we've all had a lot of time to get into these stocks as the market was correcting, but. Now, if this is early stages of a longer term bull run, could be a great time too to make sure that you are in the stocks that you want to be in. Dave, thank you for your time. We'll post a link to the Junior Miner Junkie website so people can follow along with you. And we'll touch base next week to see if there are any other developments to talk about. Have a great rest of your week there, Dave. You too, guys. Thanks a lot.